take a good look at these two pieces of footage. On the left, you see Final Fantasy The Spirits Within from 2001. On the right, a Navi from Avatar in 2009. The difference is staggering, right? The question isn't just how James Cameron pulled this off, but why no one had done it before? The answer lies in a bold decision, completely ignoring established filmmaking techniques. Cameron understood that the problem couldn't be solved by simply improving existing motion capture. It required reinventing the entire system from the ground up. Even if that meant having actors perform underwater without oxygen tanks, holding their breath while cameras captured their every moment. But to understand how we found a solution, despite everyone calling him crazy, we need to go back to the origins of motion capture and how it all began. The early years of digital characters faced a notorious enemy, the uncanny valley. This strange phenomenon causes digital characters to feel increasingly unsettling the closer they resemble real humans. A bizarre sense of repulsion emerged. Something just felt off. And that something is exactly what frustrated filmmakers like James Cameron for years. The technical issue stemmed from the limitations of traditional motion capture systems, which relied on dozens of reflective markers placed on an actor's body and face. Special infrared cameras in a studio would track these markers, and software would translate the movements into a digital skeleton. However, this system had severe limitations. Crucial subtleties were lost. Muscle movements around the eyes, slight tremors of the mouth, and other facial expressions that convey life were missing. The Polar Express, 2004, took this uncanniness to a new level. Tom Hanks' performance was captured using the most advanced technology available at the time. Yet, even this resulted in what critics described as dead eyes, characters who stared without truly seeing. Despite all the technological marvels and millions in investment, the digital creations lacked that one crucial element that defines real human beings. Even celebrated breakthroughs like Gollum from The Lord of the Rings and later King Kong in Peter Jackson's remake showed clear limitations. Andy Serkis delivered extraordinary physical performances for both roles, but many of his subtle facial expressions were lost in translation to the digital world. The emotional nuances Serkis conveyed through his face were simplified or vanished entirely. The problem was further exacerbated by the fact that motion capture forced actors into exaggerated expressions. A subtle smile had to to be amplified into a grimace just to be properly registered. Actors adapted their natural expressions to help the system, but in doing so, they lost their authenticity. This created an unnatural workflow where animators had to manually intervene for hours, adding or correcting emotions that weren't captured. This intervention caused a disconnect between the actor's performance and what ultimately appeared on screen. The crucial missing piece was micro-expressions, fleeting, almost invisible muscle movements that our brains subconsciously register as real emotion. We are evolutionarily wired to recognize these signals in milliseconds. When they're absent, our brains sound an alarm that something feels wrong, even if we can't quite pinpoint why. And Cameron knew that his Navi characters would only be believable if audiences could form an emotional connection with them. While the film industry remained fixated on improving existing motion capture technology, Cameron asked a radically different question. What if we completely abandoned markers and simply observed what an actor actually does? This idea laid the foundation for a revolution in digital character creation. Cameron understood better than anyone that capturing human emotion wasn't about collecting more data points, but about capturing the right data. He went back to the fundamentals of acting, the face. After years of experimentation, his team developed a ground groundbreaking alternative to traditional motion capture. The result was stunningly simple in concept, but highly advanced in execution. A lightweight helmet, equipped with a small HD camera, positioned directly in front of the actor's face. Unlike the dozens of markers that only tracked positional changes, this head-mounted camera recorded the entire face in detail. Every wrinkle, every minuscule muscle twitch, every eye movement, but more importantly, the intention and emotion behind them were captured as video rather than as isolated coordinates in space. This image-based approach marked a fundamental shift in how emotions were translated into the digital world. The technical execution was as ingenious as the concept itself. The cameras were surrounded by a ring of LED lights, ensuring even illumination of the face. This might sound simple, but it was crucial in making every subtle expression visible regardless of the filming angle. No muscle movement could hide in the shadows anymore. 
For the actors, this system meant unprecedented freedom. Zoe Saldana, who portrayed Neytiri, noted that the technology allowed her to act without the restrictions of physical markers, enabling her to express a broader range of emotions. Actors no longer had to exaggerate their expressions just to be registered by the system. They could simply act. The camera captured even the smallest emotional nuances without the actors having to be consciously aware of the technology. But capturing these emotions was only the first step. The challenge was even more complex. How do you translate a human smile onto the face of a blue alien with a completely different facial structure? The cameras on the actors' faces collected an overwhelming amount of data. But that was only half the job. The facet software functioned as the brain behind the movements, essential for translating a human face into the completely different anatomy of a navi. The software used in most films up to that point fell short. It couldn't process the massive amounts of data and lacked the ability to accurately translate emotions without making the final result look like a human in blue makeup. FACET's Facial Action Coding Expression Translation System was the revolutionary solution. Developed specifically for Avatar, this system could recognize and translate the nuances of human facial expressions. Where earlier systems only tracked surface-level movements, Facets registered muscle tension and micro-expressions, which are crucial for believable emotion. When an actor furrowed their eyebrows, Facets didn't just record the physical muscle movement, it also captured the emotional intent behind it. The system interpreted what that expression meant and ensured that the same emotional depth was translated onto a face that was fundamentally different from a human's. This emotional translation is what set Avatar apart from everything that came before. And yeah, this generated a massive amount of raw data. Facets tracked thousands of facial movements, while the motion capture systems separately recorded the actor's body language and movement. The result? 18.5 petabytes of raw data. For reference, one petabyte equals one million gigabytes. But the challenge wasn't just storing this data. It was about processing it and extracting the right information. Not every recorded movement was relevant. That's why Weta Digital developed a system that filtered out unnecessary data and kept only the essential expressions and movements. This made the animation not just more efficient, but also much more accurate. But even with this optimization, one question remained. How do you translate human emotions onto a non-human face without making it feel unnatural? The Navi have longer faces, larger eyes, and a completely different muscle structure than humans. A one-to-one -one transfer of human expressions would feel awkward and unnatural. The exact issue that caused earlier CGI characters to fall into the uncanny valley. The solution? A second crucial technological breakthrough alongside facets. The Anatomically Plausible Facial System, APFS. Where previous animation systems simply moved markers from point A to point B, often resulting in stiff or exaggerated expressions, APFS actually simulated how facial muscles truly work together to express emotion. This meant that underlying muscle tension and movements were naturally adapted to the anatomy of the Navi. Facets understands the emotion and converts it into animation data. APFS ensures that emotion is correctly and realistically applied to a Navi face. Together, these systems didn't just make the Navi look good, they made them feel real. But the biggest challenge, the eyes. This is where human emotion is most visible and intense. Facets didn't just analyze eyelid movements, it also tracked pupil dilation, tension around the eye socket, and even moisture levels that define an emotional gaze. Did you know that one second of detailed facial animation in Avatar took an animator three to four weeks to perfect? Haha, <laughs> yep, you heard that right. While the audience experienced a smooth, seamless scene, a team of technicians worked for months on just a few minutes of footage. This insane time investment shows the technical Mount Everest that Cameron's team had to climb after the actors had done their work. For the first time ever, the full emotional range of an actor was transferred to a non-human character without losing its essence. Actors could express even their most subtle emotional nuances, knowing that the system would understand and translate them perfectly. And it didn't stop at faces. Even the tales had to be right. Imagine this. 4,000 unique tails, each with its own movement patterns and physical properties, all of which had to move naturally in response to the Navi's body language. A tiny detail that most viewers never consciously noticed 
but one that was crucial for making these alien beings feel real. But how do you make sure that a director not only understands all of this, but also has the freedom to work as if he were filming a real world? These emotional translations were just the beginning of Cameron's revolution. Imagine this. A director stands in an empty studio, surrounded by actors in motion capture suits, while on his monitor, he sees a living, breathing alien world. With every movement of his camera, the perspective on that digital reality shifts. This was the groundbreaking breakthrough Cameron created with Avatar, a fundamental shift in filmmaking. Before this innovation, the gap between filming and the final result was enormous. Directors gave instructions to actors in bare studios, blind to how their digital counterparts would ultimately appear. They worked in the dark for months, waiting for technicians to transform their footage into the final scenes, like a painter who can only see the results of his brush strokes months after applying them. Cameron refused to accept this limitation. His team developed the virtual camera system, a breakthrough as revolutionary as the facial capture cameras. This device looked like a regular video camera without a lens, equipped with sensors that tracked every movement within the motion capture studio. These movements were instantly translated into a digital representation on a connected monitor. The virtual camera allowed Cameron to direct computer animated scenes, just as he would with live action filmmaking. This technology not only bridged the gap between physical and digital worlds, but also fundamentally changed how directors worked. As Cameron moved through the studio, he was simultaneously navigating the lush jungles of Pandora. He could immediately read emotions on Navi faces, perfect compositions, and give actors precise directions. Zoe, look slightly to the left. Pandora's moon is rising from behind that mountain, he could say, while seeing the result unfold in real time. For Avatar The Way of Water, this groundbreaking technology was adapted for underwater filming. The team developed a waterproof version of the virtual camera for use in large water tanks. This allowed Cameron to direct underwater scenes with the same immediacy and control while directly visualizing how digital sea creatures, plants, and light effects came together. This innovation didn't just transform the production process. It freed filmmakers from a fundamental dilemma. Previously, directors had to choose between artistic control, with practical effects, or visual spectacle, with CGI. With the virtual camera, they could finally achieve both. The sense of artistic freedom was palpable. Directors could finally see their vision come to life without months-long delays. They could experiment with camera angles and movements long after the actors had gone home, exploring endless possibilities that had once been out of reach. But Cameron wasn't done yet. The virtual camera had pushed boundaries, but one realm remained untamed. Water. How do you capture realistic motion and emotion in an environment that distorts everything? The direct connection between director and actor faced its ultimate challenge when Cameron decided to literally submerge his technology underwater. What experts deemed impossible, performing motion capture in a medium that distorts light, where every air bubble could be a potential disaster, became Cameron's next obsession. A challenge that forced him to once again ask the impossible. How long can you hold your breath while acting? Capturing underwater performances meant taming an uncontrollable element. Water, which covers more than 70% of our planet, systematically disrupts every digital recording technique. It distorts light, creates unpredictable reflections, and even the tiniest air bubble could throw off the entire tracking system. If capturing motion on land was already a technological marvel, doing it underwater was like trying to trap lightning in a bottle. Cameron built a massive water tank holding nearly a million liters, where actors had to perform fully submerged. No simulations, just real people fighting against their basic instincts. Cameron wanted his actors to feel the underwater world rather than simply mimicking it. That's why Zoe Saldana, Sam Worthington, Sigourney Weaver, and the rest of the cast had to act underwater for real. This allowed them to experience the currents, adjust their movements to the water's resistance, and deliver performances that felt more natural. The most astonishing aspect? The actors had to do this without oxygen tanks. Any air bubble would be detected by the tracking cameras as a false marker. Cameron's solution was free diving training, the art of staying underwater for extended periods without any breathing equipment. The results were spectacular. 
Kate Winslet held her breath for more than seven minutes, while Sigourney Weaver, over 70 years old at the time, managed over six minutes. These are feats that would be impossible for untrained individuals. Even more impressive was the fact that these actors weren't just holding their breath, they were simultaneously delivering complex emotional performances. To overcome the issue of surface reflections, the team covered the top of the tank with thousands of small white balls. This eliminated unwanted reflections while allowing the actors to swim through them whenever they needed air. The filming process combined two volumes, one underwater and one above, which seamlessly connected. This allowed for continuous scenes where characters could dive, swim, and resurface without breaking the performance capture a technical achievement that was previously unthinkable. The actors also underwent an intense training program, including parkour, to mimic the natural movements of aquatic creatures. They didn't just learn to hold their breath like underwater beings, they learned to move like them. The combination of free diving, physical training, and adapted motion capture technology resulted in digital characters that moved underwater with a fluidity that conventional CGI could never achieve. In water, where light bends differently and the laws of movement change, actors had to express emotion while fighting their primal instinct to breathe. Their bodies were under extreme physiological stress, yet they had to deliver nuanced emotional performances at the same time. The result was a visual experience fundamentally different from anything seen before. By capturing real underwater motion instead of simulating it, the digital Navi gained an unmatched authenticity. The way their hair flowed with the current, the resistance of the water against their movements, and the natural adjustments humans make when submerged. All of these elements were perfectly recorded and transferred to their digital counterparts. And that is how James Cameron has completely revolutionized the filmmaking industry as we know it today. But there is only one director even more daring than Cameron. One that sent a cameraman into a black hole just for the movie Interstellar. Or at least, that's how I described it. Curious what I'm talking about? Click here to find out.